Welcome! This week I'll be showing you mainly how to use the side of your brush to your advantage, in order to catch the tiniest details like this fur, as well as painting rust and building texture over large surfaces. I'll begin with the weapon which I left unattached in order to make it easy to paint the cloak later. I began with the metallic since I would be dry brushing all over the blade, this way I don't have to repaint the bandages which I knew I was going to hit. If you find the video useful, make sure to subscribe. I've been posting videos every 6 days in the beginning of the year and I plan to continue till the end of it. To avoid touching the blade while painting the bandages, I place my brush slightly sideways. You'll see me doing this a lot during the paint job. With everything base coated, I diluted burnt amber paint with a lot of water, and applied it all over in order to get everything to look more dirty, as well as getting some separation in the crevices. After that, I did the same with the reddish brown, but only of the metallic, in order to start building up some rust. A second coat was applied, but only over the flat part of the weapon. We'll be avoiding the edge from now on. With the red dry, a coat of diluted orange is applied follow by some random dots with a not so diluted mix of orange to create spots of accumulated rust. Back to my metallic color, I made use of the side of the brush once again to edge highlight the weapon. Make sure to angle your brush with the side towards the edge and gently go over it. Here is a close-up, very gently working with the side, not the point. Here is a link to my Rust tutorial if you want more info on this effect. The same technique was used on the bandages, with the latter color in order to finish up the weapon. Moving on to the model itself, I began by blocking the color of each element. I used four colors, including the metallic. For the fur, leather and cloak, I'll be using the same sky blue color to highlight them all. Not only is it more convenient, but will make the colors match better. Before highlighting, I first had to build up shadows and separations. I mixed burnt amber and indigo oils for this. I have a full tutorial on oil washes, which I'll link above. You can use acrylic washes for this step just as well, or even diluted paint, just as I have shown on a previous video. I used the soil mix to cover the whole model. After letting it sit for an hour, a brush with solvent was used to remove the excess. We 
which left me with this result once dry. To highlight the fur, I worked the base color into my brush and removed the excess paint from it by doing a couple of passes on my finger. With the side of the brush, I went gently over the fur, catching only the details just as I did before with the weapon. By removing the excess on my finger, I make sure no paint overflows into those dark recesses. After doing this all over, another pass with a bit of sky blue added to the base color was applied to finish up the fur, creating a lot of contrast between lights and shadows. The key here is to be gentle and rinsing your brush every two or three passes, since the lack of paint on the brush will make it dry faster. I did just the same with the leather, started with the highlight of the base color before adding sky blue to it and doing a second round of highlighting. For the metallics, just one pass of the base color was needed. I removed the excess paint on my finger and lightly go over the edges and flat surfaces sideways. This is pretty much dry brushing but in a more controlled way. For the cloak, I had a lot of blank space to fill up. I decided the easiest way to make it interesting would be to stipple randomly, gradually adding more and more sky blue to the mix. The stippling technique is very aggressive on the brush, so make sure to use an old one. Once I'm done with this, I'll be filtering it all back together with an even coat of the diluted base color. I went heavy with the lighting since I knew the wash would tune everything down a lot, and I wanted some of the effect to show up. While I am calling it a wash, remember that it's just our base color diluted with a lot of water. I apply this little by little, not letting the paint pull.
Once dry, all the stippling has fused with the cloak. I finish it by highlighting the most prominent edges and doing some lines and scratches on the end of the cloak. And just as I've been doing during the whole video, I work with the side, not with the tip of the brush. After basing and painting the rim black, the model was finished. That is it for this week's video, I hope you found it useful and make sure to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments. Thank you for watching.